welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Today, nostalgia is king. Or should we say queen? What is lacking in these times that we constantly seek solace in the past? Especially when the truth is the past was a harder, slower, hungrier place. Yet, many of us try to recapture the past by seizing upon its outward trappings. You who do so should be careful. Unconsciously, you may break through the glitter and capture the essence. And then what will become of you? Your clothes and hairstyle may come back into fashion, but your sense of values? Our mystery drama, Blind Witness, was written especially for the Mystery Theater by Sam Dan and stars Patricia Elliott and Carmen Matthews. It is sponsored in part by Buick Motor Division. Truth, as we all would agree, is stranger than fiction. And that is because, as the scientists tell us, matter can neither be created nor destroyed. The things we have to work with are the things that already exist. And only they can serve as the building blocks for our castles, real or imagined. We call the ones that we have seen before truth. And the new or strange ones, fiction. The difference lies in perception. Is everything clear? Well then, forward with our story. Well, I should know the place. It's around the corner. Okay. First, walk past. See if he's alone. Hey, you expect I'd go in there if there was somebody in the joint? What do you think? I started in this racket yesterday. He ought to be by himself this hour of the night. If not... Yeah, yeah. I'll wait. I'll wait. You walk in. You don't say a word. You just let him have it. You understand? Why are you so nervous, Chuck? I was yeah. born nervous. As dark as the ace of spades, the rain's coming down cats and dogs, there ain't a soul on the street. This job has to be right, exactly right. So that's why I'm here, ain't right? it? All right, all right, go get him. You got my dough? I don't do this for kicks. You know I got your dough. 25 seconds to walk to the giant, 10 seconds to knock him off, 25 seconds to walk back to the car. That's what they call portal to portal pay. It adds up to exactly one minute. Uh, ten grand for one minute. It just said go ahead. Ten grand a minute. I'm the highest paid wage earner in the world. Well, you go already. What are you waiting for? All right. In three minutes, it's going to be midnight. So what? It's still Friday the 13th. <laughs> you mean you're scared of that stuff? In this line of work, you take every edge you can get. Why knock a guy off on Friday the 13th? Wouldn't you wait two minutes and cool him on Saturday the 14th? Good evening, Mr. Askelon. Now, what are you doing now this time of night, Mr. Hume? Uh, you should be scared to walk the streets. Thank you for your concern, Mr. Askelon. You're a true friend. Well, well, it's, it's almost midnight. And there's a very low element out on the streets. I have come to obtain my sister's medicine. Yes, 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 yes. I, I've got some right here. Oh, thank you. How much is it? The usual price, the five dollars. Mr. Ascalon, haven't you ever heard of inflation? Hmm? In inflation? You have been charging me five dollars for the past 25 years. Shouldn't the price have gone up? Oh, not to you, Mr. Hume. And now I tell you what you better do. I'm about to close up. So if you wait a few minutes, I'll walk you to your door. Oh, that's very kind of you. Oh, those hard candies my sister is so fond of, did they come in? Oh, yes, yes. Now, uh, where did I put them? Uh, oh, yes. Uh, you go down to the first row of shelves near the door, and it's the... Oh, listen to me. Uh, I keep forgetting you can't see. <laughs> the first row of shelves, you say? How do you do it, Mr. Hume? <laughs> it's a matter of mastering your environment, of visualizing every shape, of, of memorizing every distance. Of, uh, down here, you said? Yes, yes. Say, that's uncanny. I mean, 
How do you just put your finger on it? That... Oh, yes, sir. What can I do for you? No. No, don't. Don't you think it's Mr. Absalom? Mr. Absalom? Hey, who are you? Where did you come from? Mr. It's too Absalom. bad, sister. Get out of here. It sounded like the 4th of July in there. What happened? There was a dame in the store. What do you mean there was a dame in the store? I look in the window. He's all by himself. I walk in. I hit him. And all of a sudden, I hear this dame's voice. What dame's voice? She must have been behind the shelves. She just shakes up out of nowhere. Well, did you, did you... Yeah, 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 yeah. She's finished. Listen, are you sure? Nobody could live with all the lead I give her. And Ascalon? You don't have to worry about Ascalon no more. Yeah, with that dame and all, it better be clean. Cleanliness guaranteed. That's why I get the price. Hand it over. Okay, okay. Uh, ten big ones. But it took me a little more than a minute. And my overhead also went up. Must be this inflation, huh? <laughs> Captain Sterling. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, yes, uh, the man's name was Armand Ascalon. Fifty years old. Has he owned a, a drugstore? I, uh, I assigned it to Jedwig. Uh, Julia Jedwig. Well, she's attached to homicide. Yes, so she's a detective first grade. <laughs> no, I don't think she can do any harm. I'll supervise her closely. Yes, sir. Oh, none of this I need it. Captain Sterling. Oh, uh, come in, Julia. Fine. Sit yeah. down. Now, what we got here is one of these uh, neighborhood knockoffs. Now, uh, you know how to go about this? Well, sir, I'm... Uh... The best way is to keep your eyes and your ears open and work close with the patrolman on the beat. Uh, yes, Captain. Now, what we got here has to be a stick-up. You know, most likely a junkie or else some hood. And Well, Julia, don't be afraid to lean on me for help. Thank you, Captain Sterling. Any questions? Uh, well, it's uh, it's just about the gun. Well, what about the gun? I have a report from ballistics. Mm-hmm. The two bullets that were found in his body were fired by a three fifty seven Magnum revolver. So, what's your question? Well, it would seem to me, sir, that uh, your ordinary junkie or hoodlum who holds up a store wouldn't have an expensive Magnum. Mm-hmm. That type would usually employ a cheap Saturday night special. Well, a junkie could steal a Magnum, couldn't he? Well, yes, Captain, but but if it was a junkie and he needed money for a fix, he would have sold the Magnum. Uh, that's not bad thinking, Julia. So it doesn't have to be a junkie. It could be just some punk out to raise cash. Yes, sir. It's just that no money was taken. Mr. Ascalon had a $5 bill in his hand, and there was $100 in the cash drawer, and I, I don't know how to account for that. Well, here's how. You'll learn with experience. Now, there's a certain type of punk who nerves himself up to pull a job. You know, it goes wrong. He shoots, he kills, he sees the dead victim, and he gets terrified, and all he wants to do is get out fast. Do you understand? Yes, sir, I do. It's just that a magnum isn't quite the kind of revolver for the type of killer you have in mind. A magnum makes you think of a professional killer. Huh? Well, why would a professional risk everything on a $100 holdup? Uh, I like what you're trying to do, Julia. You have the stuff to become a good detective. But right, this is open and shut. You're looking for a punk who panicked. So you go out there and do the routine things and look for people who might have seen or heard something. Uh, yes, sir. Well, I, I already have. Good. Any results? Well, it introduced a problem. First of all, the number of shots that were fired. Uh, Well, uh, why is that a problem? Well, I found exactly eight people who told me that they heard the shooting, and and some said they heard five shots, some said they heard six, Mm -hmm. but uh, all agreed that they heard more than two. Well? But only two bullets hit Mr. Ascalon. Oh, doesn't that only go to prove what I told you? It was a nervous punk who empties the gun at Ascalon and only hits him twice. Yes, Captain, but that still leaves us with a problem. Five or six shots were fired. Two hit Mr. Ascalon. Mm-hmm. That leaves three or four slugs unaccounted for. Uh, well, what, what do you mean, 
unaccounted for. We can't find them. They should be in the wall behind, above, or either side of where Mr. Asquan was standing, but there's no trace of them. But they got to be there. We went over the place very carefully, and, uh, well, that raises another problem. Uh, yeah? The glass door to the street, it was smashed. Uh, probably by a bullet or, or a bullet. Uh, uh, well, what should that have uh, Well, as you enter the store, the counter is directly to the rear. We found Mr. Ascalon's body behind that counter. Well, what's the problem? The cash register is on that counter. The hood comes in, guns him down. Yes, with two shots. But where did the others go? Uh, uh, you tell me. There were two groups of shots. What do you mean, two groups? All the accounts of the people who heard the shooting agree. First, they heard two shots. Then there was a pause, a few seconds. Mm -hmm. Then three or four more shots. Therefore, the first two shots were fired at Mr. Ascalon. The next three or four were fired at someone else. Uh, how do you know? The killer enters the store. He shoots Mr. Ascalon. Now, to do that, the killer has to be facing the rear wall. Now... He hears or he sees something that makes him turn around to face the front of the store. He fires again. At whom? Well, at, at someone who must have witnessed the crime. That's why we can't find the slugs. They were fired in the direction of the street. One or more even broke the glass in the front door. Well, what happened to the witness, if there was a witness? The witness could have stopped one, two, three, or up to four of those bullets. But he didn't stop any of them as far as we know. If he's dead, we would have found the body. See, maybe the killer could have missed him clean. But the fact is, Captain Sterling, there is a witness. The killer did fire at somebody. Well, maybe, maybe not. It, it's a dark night. It's raining hard. The killer is nervous. He thinks he hears a sound of something just outside. Uh, he turns around. He fires wild, blind. Uh, well, that could account for all assurance. Yes, Captain well, you were going real good there for a while, Julia, and I like the way you think. But, like I said, in the end, it'll turn out to be you're a junkie, you're a hood. Yeah. You don't think so. Well, you could be right. Okay, okay, knock it off. We am coming, okay. Who's there? Me, Daddy. Mule. Mule. Hey, hey, what's the matter with you? Let me in quick. Yeah, I was fast asleep. Good thing you woke me up. Yeah, I got a plane leaves in an hour. Uh, have you seen the morning paper? Oh, uh, well, I never read the paper. Yeah, well, you better read this. It says druggist murdered. Well, you got to expect the papers to print this type of thing. It's news, ain't it? Just read it. Well, why should I read it? Ain't going to be news to me. Druggist murdered. At midnight last night, Mr. Armand Ascalon, 50-year-old proprietor of Ascalon's pharmacy on the corner of Bridge and High Streets, was shot to death by a bandit. Hey, 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 I ain't no bandit. It has not yet been determined what has been taken from the store. The police are following an active line of investigation, according to Captain of Homicide Detectives James L. Sterling, Jr. So? Why do you mean so? Ain't there something missing from that story? No, I don't think so. Thanks for crying out loud. Oh, okay. What's the beef? My boss calls me into the office this morning, right after he reads the paper. And he lays this question on me, and so I'm laying it on you. What about the dame? What dame? You said there was a dame in the store. That's right, there was. I didn't spot her at first, but uh, since she's seen the whole thing, I uh, had to take care of her, too. And you did? I told you she's dead. Well, that's what I told the boss last night. So this morning, he wants to know, why don't it say nothing about her in the paper? What do you mean? It's got to say, hand me that. Yeah, go ahead, pal. Where does it say one word about the dame? What? But I got her. I know I got her. Then why wasn't it reported? They can't keep a thing like this out of the press. You missed her. That's what you did. You missed the queen. No, I wasn't ten feet away from her, and I don't miss. I could even hear her go, Ugh, when the first bullets hit her. She's dead, I tell you, Chappie. She's dead. Okay, Mule. Just answer me one question. Where's the body? <laughs> Where indeed? 
Is it possible that Mr. Mule, who is obviously a highly skilled professional assassin, could have fired all those shots at her and missed? Mr. Mule is convinced it could be a trick on the part of the police. But we know the police are completely unaware of Mr. Hoon themselves. Well, what did happen? Is she dead or alive? I'll be back shortly with Act Two. Edgar Allan Poe, who invented the type of story you're listening to now, set down the basic rules. These were later refined and polished by one of Poe's greatest disciples, Sir Arthur Conan Doyle. And the most important rule states, When you have eliminated the impossible, whatever explanation remains, no matter how improbable, must be the truth. Which brings us now to a consideration of the elderly blind lady we had met earlier, Miss Agatha Tehoun. Aggie? Aggie, dear. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, my goodness. What a dream I had. Dream? About what? Please, dear sister, do, don't press me for details. But you have such a, a frightened look on your face. Maggie, you're up. And you're in your wheelchair. You were able to get out of bed and into your chair by yourself. Yes, Aggie, dear. Thanks to you, because you left the medicine right by my bed. and It eased the pain sufficiently. The medicine? Oh, no. Oh, then it wasn't a dream, Maggie. It wasn't a dream. Please, I I don't understand. Mr. Ascalon is dead. Maggie, what are you talking about? You had finally fallen asleep. It was close to midnight. Your medicine bottle was empty. I knew you would need some in the morning. And so, I went downstairs. You, You went down into the jungle at night? Maggie, dear. Could you face the morning without your medicine? But you could have been murdered. These streets at night. You know what lurks behind every doorway. And so I fortified myself. I put on the vest. At least I would be safe from knives and bullets. You should have waited till morning and, and wheeled me. The rule is you must never go alone. By morning. You would have been in too much pain. I would have put up with it somehow. And beneath my blanket, I could have the Colt 45 in one hand and the can of mace in the other. I have no choice. And Aggie, you know you can't see. I know how to get every single place in this neighborhood and back. Just because I'm blind, there's no reason to treat me as an invalid. Oh, oh my poor darling Maggie, I, I'm so sorry. I shouldn't have said that word. It's true. I, I am an invalid. I can't walk. I'm also a, a drug addict. Don't say that. Will that change anything? We were both in the same accident. Don't relive it. I lost the use of my legs. You lost the use of your eyes. For 40 years now, I've clung to you. I've been supported by your strength. Because I have none of my own. <laughs> Look at us. We've become two crazy old ladies. Because of me, I won't listen to any more of this. You risked your life for me. You, you said Mr. Ascalon is dead? Yes. He was killed by a jungle animal. How awful. But how do you know? I was in the store when it happened. Aggie, did, did the killer see you? Not at first. He walked into the store and began shooting. Then, he noticed me. Oh, Aggie! He said, Hey, who are you? Where did you come from? Did you say anything? I was, I was petrified. And then he said, It's too bad, sister. And I heard him shoot. And the noise of the shots were deafening. And I felt the bullet crash into my vest with, with, with such force that I was almost knocked off my feet. And I could feel little stinging sensations as each bullet struck the vest. Let me look at the vest. It's it's on the chair beside my bed. The the cover is torn. What are these? These pieces of metal. The slugs. 
We must have been caught in the padding. <gasps> oh, poor Mr. Ascalon. Why would anyone wish to shoot him? He was good to poor people like us. Do you know, if it weren't for Mr. Ascalon, I I would have to go elsewhere for that, that medicine. Do you realize how much we would have to pay? The, the killer, he saw you. He spoke to you. Yes, which means he knows what you look like. Yes, yes, he probably does. He, he shot at you so you couldn't describe him. Well, I couldn't describe him anyway. But he doesn't know that, so he will come looking for you. Oh, no, no, he won't. Well, why do you say that? Because he thinks he killed me. But your body won't be found in the store along with Mr. Ascalon. Oh. oh, I didn't think of that. I know he had a good look at me. Oh, I'm scared. Now, please, please, don't be frightened. No, it, it's my turn to be strong. And neither of us will leave the house. You must not be seen on the street. Well, we can telephone Mr. Bernstein to send us our groceries. But I will have to leave the house. No, I won't allow it. I'll have to find another person to sell me your medicine. I'll do without. You can't. But the pains aren't real. If they were, then Dr. Morrison would have prescribed the medicine for me. Whether or not the pains are real, they're real enough to you. I'll have to stop humoring myself. And you have to stop humoring me. Your life depends on it. Yeah, I know that's for me. Yeah, this chappy. He says he knocked her off. That's what I told him. Okay, boss, let me lay it on him. Right. What's going on, chappy? It's as simple as one, two, three. You didn't hit the old lady. But I... Like nothing. So, we got to find her. And you got to get rid of her. Suppose she describes you to the cops. I got an alibi. You think I ever leave home without one? Yeah, well, some cops may recognize you from the description. Yeah, well, I told you. No, Mule, it's our headache. Because if you come into the picture, alibi or not, the cops will know it wasn't a stick-up. Which is what my boss wants them to think it was. Okay, okay. What do you want me to do? Describe her. Well, how do you describe an old dame? Very skinny, dressed in black, maybe 70 years old. You know what I mean? White hair? Yeah, 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 I think so. And, uh, anyway, something else. Uh, uh, glasses. Okay, is that it? Yeah, yeah, that, that's it. Except, uh, except what? I guess. Uh, uh, nothing, I guess. If I seen her again... I'd know her. Okay, Mew. Okay. We're going to make sure you see her again. Uh, good evening, Mrs. Carwell. Oh. Oh, you're the cop, the lady cop. Uh, yes. Uh, may I come in? Mm. Oh, thank you. <laughs> you got more questions you want to ask me, huh? Just one, Mrs. Carvel. You know, they ought to have more lady cops. <laughs> kind of makes everything easier. <laughs> uh, now, the, the other night, when Mr. Ascalon was killed... Yeah? You heard a series of shots? Yeah. Did you hear any other sounds in the street? Uh, I noticed that your window opened... No, I didn't and... see anything. We was in bed. Uh, how about an automobile? Oh, yeah. Yeah, a after the shots, I'm... I'm sure I heard something sound like a guy was running, and then I, I heard a car taking off there. And that's all? Yeah. My husband, he slept through it all. He could drop the atom bomb in here, and he left... But I, I run to the window and look. The, the street was deserted. And you're sure you heard nothing more? Well, later on, I heard one of my tenants, this uh, Miss Aggie Terhune, coming up the stairs. Uh, well, how, how did you know that it was her coming up the stairs? Oh. I could hear that cane of hers go thump, thump. Oh, I see. Then she came upstairs right after the murder. Yeah, around that time. And she's been outside in that weather at that hour. Hmm. Where do you suppose she'd been? Well, I figured the drugstore. So she's got this twin sister in a wheelchair that always needs her uh, medicine. Then she had to be there at the time of the murder. Are you sure that you heard her coming up the stairs? 
Well, she couldn't have been there while Mr. Ascalon was being murdered, or she'd have been killed, too. I don't know, maybe I didn't hear her coming up the stairs. But you just said you were positive. Oh, it's such a scary night. Maybe, maybe I dreamed it. Maggie? It's the door. Yes. Who could it be? I don't know. The killer. Miss Calhoun? It's a woman's voice. Oh, the, the killer wasn't a woman. He could have brought one along to throw us off guard. Uh, Miss Calhoun. Even so, Eddie, we have to answer. Do you have the Colt 45 handy? Yes. Who is it? It's a police officer. What do you want? I have to ask you some questions. Can, can we trust her? Uh, Miss Calhoun, I can't identify myself properly. I am about to open the door. Have your badge ready. Oh, she's all right, Aggie. That's a police badge. And she's alone. Please, don't point that automatic at me. I have a license to own it, and I know how to use it. A pistol. We find it necessary in this jungle. And hanging on the wall. Is that a bulletproof vest? It is. Hmm, this quality must have cost a fortune. We don't even have anything this good in the police department. How can we help you, officer? Uh, which of you is Miss Agnes Terhoon? I am. Did you know Mr. Armand Ascalon? Yes, we, we bought our medicines there. When was the last time you saw him? I never saw him. I beg your pardon? My sister is blind. Oh. Why? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking for someone who might have been in the store before or during the time of the uh, murder. Neither my sister nor I would venture into the streets at that hour. I see. I'm sure. Well, ladies, I, I'm so sorry I bothered you. Thank you very much for your cooperation. Goodbye. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Aggie. Aggie, you could have told her the truth that you were in the drugstore. No, my dear. We must keep out of this at all costs. But she was a police officer. Couldn't we trust her? We can't trust anyone who lives out there in that jungle. The jungle. Who says the jungle must be a damp, steamy mass of crazy vegetation? It can be a steel and stone canyon of tall buildings and busy traffic. After all, it's not what the place looks like that makes it a jungle. It's the law that its inhabitants obey or choose to disregard. Our safari continues in Act 3, which I shall bring to you in just a few moments. What's your favorite time of the year? Fall okay? But can winter be far behind? Winter? Yeah, but in order to get to skiing, you have to wade through all that snow, ice, slush, and rain. Summer? Better think again. 96 in the shade, and there isn't any shade. And humidity? Well, forget it. Springtime? Now, that's the favorite time of the year. York Air Conditioning would like you to have springtime at your house all year round. Your local York whole house air conditioning dealer has springtime in a machine. And he'll install one of York's springtime machines at your house quicker and for less money than you think. Consult the Yellow Pages for your local York dealer. He wants to keep America comfortable, and he wants to start at your house. Call him for a free home air conditioning survey. In New York, call 212-894-6837. In Westchester, Putnam, Long Island, Fairfield County, Connecticut, call Collect. That's 212-894-6837. I want a beer like no other beer. I'm Schaefer's Beer Consistency makes a great beer. And Schaefer's consistently great tasting every single time because Schaefer's brewed the old world way. Croisoning, we call it. Since 1842, Croisoning, the extra step of brewing twice, has kept Schaefer consistently fresh and crisp, consistently great tasting beer after Schaefer beer. Schaefer beer, the 
The F and M Schaefer Brewing Company, New York, New York. These things start simply enough. What appears to be a routine holdup suddenly assumes larger and weightier proportions. Both the law and the criminals are searching for a supposed witness. A diligent young policewoman has succeeded in her quest. How does the underworld plan to go about it? Listen, Chappie, I can't afford to hang around here. I got a business to attend to. Oh, no, you're going to hang around here until your business here is finished. I've been proud of the neighborhood. I could spot the old day. Pull in your horns. What does that mean? The boss just figured out how we can get this old dame to come to us. Yeah? What was she doing in a drugstore at midnight in a howling rain? Beats me. Come on, use your head. Would she go out if it wasn't something important? Why did the boss want Ascalon knocked off in the first place? I never asked him kind of questions. To let all the smallies know that he's running the drug racket in this town. Nobody can go into business for himself. It's got to be organized. All right. This Ascalon clown was running what amounted to a charity clinic. The fact that he got knocked off made the message loud and clear. So, what does this have to do with my old dame? An old dame. She has to be a junkie. She needed a fix. Yeah. What else? You shot at her and missed. How could I miss? You scared her. Now, you know what she looks like. She knows she's in trouble. So what's she doing? She's laying low. But sooner or later, she's got to come to the surface. Why? Because she's a junkie. She'll need the stuff again. She can't go to Ascalon no more. She'll have to find a supplier. And the only supplier operating in that neighborhood right now is one of our own people. Captain, I found the witness. Uh, what witness? Well, you remember I told you the killer fired at someone else after he shot Mr. Ascalon? Uh, now, Julia, that's pure speculation. The person he fired at was the witness, and I found her. Her? But we have a problem. She refuses to admit she was there, and even if she did, she couldn't help us to identify the killer. She's blind. What? A little old blind lady. Well, 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 well. What, are you, what are you handing me? The killer spotted her and fired at her and would have killed her, but... Oh, you'll never believe this. She was wearing a bulletproof vest. <laughs> you are saying to me that standing in the store when the killing happened was a blind old lady wearing a, a bulletproof vest? That's it, Captain. That's what I'm saying, and I can prove it. I saw the vest, and one of the slugs was still stuck inside it. I managed to sneak it out and have it tested at ballistics. It was fired from the same gun that killed Mr. Ascalon. You, uh, you mean you got all this already? Well, you see, I had to ask myself why this blind old lady would go down to Ascalon's store so late at night in a bad neighborhood. She wore a bulletproof vest? Yes, yes. You see, she and her sister are somewhat, well, eccentric. But it, it must have been for something very important, I said to myself. Well, I, I searched through Mr. Ascalon's files, and I couldn't find a prescription for Miss Terhoon. So, what was he giving her? Drugs. That's right. And when you look closely at the sister, you see the classic signs of addiction. Her nose itches, she had a nervous tick, her, her eyes can't seem to focus, she sniffs. Drugs, sure. That's why Ascalon was knocked off. He was freelancing. The syndicate must have wanted to teach an object lesson. Yes, sir. <sighs> see? How you put these things together after you've had as much experience as I have? Uh, uh, no. No, Julia. It's all yours. You deserve all the credit. Sir, for what? We don't have the killer. We will. But how? They are going to come after your little old lady. Well, but, but how can they find her? You found her. Never let yourself get trapped into thinking that you're the only smart one. But if... Well, 
But they don't have to find her. She can't identify the, the killer. She's blind. They don't know that. But they're going to try to kill this woman. I know. Isn't there something we can do? Yes. We can protect her. But, sir, we're not infallible. Well, what do you want us to do? Spread a story in the press that, yes, there is a witness, but she's blind? Well, that might stop them from... that wouldn't help. They wouldn't believe it. They'd smell a rat. But, Julia, they know there's a witness. They won't rest till they get her. Unless we get them first. I I need my medicine. I know, Maggie, dear. I, I know it's hard. I, I have to have my medicine. I have to. But I can't go to Ascalon's anymore. I'll go somewhere else. I, I, I can't be seen on the street. Please. please. Oh, please. I'm a living hurt. Try. Try to stand it just for a little longer. Oh, help me. Maggie. Hold on. Try. It's your fault. The accident was your fault. You were driving the car. You were jealous of me. Jealous of my beautiful legs. Try to calm yourself. I was a pretty one. You smashed up the car so you could smash me. Oh. You did. And you were punished for it. You were blinded. Oh, I want my medicine. I want my medicine. Wait a little bit, please. Make it last as long as you can. Wait till tonight. No, please. no. We have to make what's left last at least a month. No, no. I want it now. Oh, please. Please, Uh, Maggie, my dear sister, please. All right, (laughs) all right. Be careful. Don't spill any. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank thank you, dear sister. Oh, Oh, the sweetest sister she will ever (laughs) have. So loyal, so loving, so true. Maggie. Oh, oh, I can close my eyes now. Thank you. Thank you. Come in, Miss Peggy. Uh, thank you. <laughs> you know, it's a miracle how you can walk like that, being blind and all. You know just where to turn and well, I, sit. I <laughs> remember it from last time, Mrs. Caravelle. I must come to the point. I need to buy some drugs. Drugs? Uh, Mrs. Caravelle, you have... A tenement house in this neighborhood. Uh, it's a respectable place. I didn't say no. Your husband is a gambler. Now, just a minute, Miss Tershio. I'm not finding fault. Only establishing credentials. Now, surely, with your knowledge of things, you could find someone who will sell me some drugs. Uh, well... Huh. Yeah. yeah, I should have figured... With old Escalon dead. Well, I, I could ask a few questions, get a few answers, and maybe put you in with somebody who knows somebody. That's all I ask. You won't get the price or the high quality. I, my, my sister, we can't afford to be particular. You know, I, I'd, I'd rather not do a thing like this. My sister is desperate. I know. I I hear her screaming sometimes. You'll help me. Yeah. If you want to call it help. Well, can you? We can saddle and ride. What you got, Chubby? I got your little old lady. Who? Her name is Terhune, Agnes Terhune. How? I told you she'd have to come up for air. How long could she stay under? She found Lester. Lester? Yeah, big Lester, the neighborhood pusher. He was told to make a note of new customers, especially old ladies. He pegged her. How does he describe her? Thin, white hair. How many of them can there be? It's got to be yours. Uh, no, no, something's missing. What? I don't know. Something about that old dame. I can't put my finger on it. Well, whatever it is, you still have to finish her off. How you doing, Julia? All oh, right. Uh, how long you been on duty? It's, uh, 12. Boring? <laughs> I'm sorry. It's not all brain work. 
Yeah, sometimes you got to pull things like stakeout. I I don't mind, sir. Anybody who looks suspicious going into the house? Well, not yet. Mm. Trouble is, we don't know who to look for. Sir, that truck hmm? pulling up in front of the house. Huh? Ah, it's not. The electric company power truck. Oh. Yeah, you see? Two guys getting out. They're going to read the meters. H- how do you know, sir? Well, they're carrying those clipboards. Well, I wouldn't be too sure. Who? <coughs> Who is it? Electric company. What? What do you want? You get a short circuit report and we've got to fix it. I, I don't know, Maggie. Well, it, it sounds reasonable. Let me it, It's just something about his voice. It's... It, his voice sounds to me. Oh, come on, lady. We ain't got all day. No. It's him. I recognize the voice. The, the, the killer. She's on it. we got to bust the door down. What's the matter, Julia? Isn't Nita reading a one-man job, Captain? Well, it's... It seems to me. I've been in that house twice, and I don't think you get to the basement from the front. You have to go around to the back to get to the service entrance. Come on. You keep behind me. Oh, oh please don't kill her. Is that the one you? Yeah, the tall one with the dark glasses. I know her anywhere. Don't kill me. Don't kill me. I'm sorry, lady. But I could never identify you. I'm blind. I'm blind. Pay no attention. Do what you have to do. Please. We're police officers. Why did... Stop it. Hold gun. That's it. Stand still. You ladies okay? Oh, uh, no. Now I know it was bothering me all along. She's blind. Are we... Are we safe now, officers? Yes, ladies. You're safe now. And so are Mule and Chappie. Safe for many years at the state penitentiary, where both of them are serving long terms without parole. And so what did we give you? Life among some very ordinary people. What appeared to be a routine (laughs) holdup, but you should know by now, nothing is ever routine on our show, as I shall demonstrate when I return in just a few seconds. Someone once said, everything can happen to anyone, provided he lives long enough. And so everything did happen on our story tonight. Everything. And even a happy ending. Because Maggie Terhoon was turned over to the proper people who managed to cure her of her addiction. For all kinds of endings, remember we are here seven times each week. Our cast included Patricia Elliott, Common Matthews, Leon Janney, Bryna Rayburn, and Earl Hammond. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams.